on this topic, but I will just quickly say to you this, okay? And, and I've, been, I've, been, I've been thinking about this for about the last 18 to 24 months. I've been in, the, I'll, be, I'll be straight honest with you guys, I've been in an intellectual, theological struggle as to how far do I go with my Christian morality in the public square when it comes to political life. Because you know, we're in Miami, there's a lot, almost, I would say, 50, 60% of the churches in a 15 mile radius either have homosexual pastors or have no problem marrying homosexuals or affirm homosexuality. So understand, apart from some of the Latin and Haitian churches who tend to be conservative, as an American church, we are very unique in Miami. In fact, it's almost dangerous to preach a gospel that says to homosexuals that if you don't repent according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's dangerous. Politically, socially. But you know what, God, for the last 18, 20 months, as I've been thinking about what's, you know, God, I know homosexuality is wrong based on the Bible, but how far does my views need to spill out outside of the church and my own personal faith? And you know what the Lord started showing me? I mean, this is... After 20 months of just thinking through and having lots of discussions, looking at the Word, really analyzing our culture, God, how far do I take this? You know what the Lord said? And then how far... Does the church take this? How do I preach to my congregation and to the outside Christian world that God's concern over these issues is a lot more far-reaching than it should be? Well, this is the verses that the Lord took me to. Matthew 5, verse 17 says, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law of prophets. Don't think I've come to do away with it. Jesus said. And this is a constant thing. The book, the book of Hebrews is an exposition on this one theme that Jesus is the fulfillment of the ceremonial laws. He's our lamb, he's our bull, he's the high priest. But, he, but, but and once we come in, as Pastor Mark preached last week, a message on salvation by faith, once we come into saving, saving faith, saving grace through faith, God expects us to keep the moral law. Not in order to be saved or stay saved. I said this last week in the closing of the sermon. But in order to please him as the God whom we love. David said in the Psalms, I love my law. I love my law. You know what he was talking about? The law and the prophets. David would sit there in the fields of Palestine as a shepherd. And he would be reading the Pentateuch. Can you imagine that? And he was meditating on God's acts of deliverance from Egypt. David loved the law. And God said, David is a man after my own heart. I'm telling you, when you love God, Romans 7, read it, read it home. Paul makes his whole exposition on how the law provokes sin. I didn't know what coveting was until the law said, thou shalt not covet. He says, he says is, is the law sin because it makes me sin and makes me want to sin more? He says, absolutely not. He says, the, the law is holy, righteous, and pure. The law of God, the Ten Commandments, Leviticus, and all the prescriptions that God gives about sexual norms are the part reflection of God's purity and boundaries. And I'm telling you, I got saved 19 years ago in the L.A. County Jail. I didn't, I wasn't initially attracted to Jesus because of his forgiveness. I'm going to tell you straight up. The thing that attracted me to Jesus was the fact that when I was reading the Proverbs and the, and the Psalms, I recognized that for 19 years of my life, I was an absolute rebel. I did what I wanted as a young person. I was the kid who was the king of the school, got ex got suspended like 20 times in a school year and was put in a special class for a bunch of nutheads. We came late and we left early. They made me go to alternative school. We called them continuation school. I was that guy. I didn't, I believe, I, I live by one rule. Do what pleases you because you're going to die. That's it. Who cares? 
So I'm going to tell you guys, when I was sitting there like you in jail and I was reading the law of God, God's wisdom literature, I fell in love with God initially because I realized through cause and effect, you do this, this happens. I'm going to tell you something. When God taught me for six months sitting in that cell in Lake County Jail, I had a Holy Spirit experience with him. I was incarcerated, but I was free. Amen. And I cannot tell you guys how much joy I had. All they did was feed me. And we had some correctional, facility, uh, correctional officers in the house. I mean, I was like, all, I, all they did was feed me and I read the Bible and prayed all day and, and talked to people and, and witnessed to people about Jesus. My pastoral ministry started right there, just so you guys know. People were like, in the LA County, like, you're going to be a pastor. I'm like, oh, I'm not. I'm not going to be like Benny Hinn blowing on people. <laughs> you should have bought a hot I'm not going to be doing that. Bought a hot <laughs> and here I am today, tongue speaking. I ain't blowing on people, but I'll pray for y'all. I want you to boil. That's biblical. But the point of it is this. I fell in love with the Lord. Because I saw the beauty. And what God was showing me that, that the law of God is like gravity. If you disregard it, you pay. When in Galatians 6, when Paul says, He who sows to the Spirit will reap peace and eternal life, but he who sows to the flesh will reap destruction. I'm telling you that every time in my life that I disregarded the law of God, I paid for it. 